Welcome back to Little Lee and Rose. I'm Summer Noel, and today we are gonna do an ombre glitter. So I'm specifically choosing two glitters that do not blend together because it's easier to do a glitter ombre on let's say a light pink to a medium pink or a very light white to a very light blush pink or something like that, it's easy. Um, well, relatively easy compared to doing this with two solid contrasting colors. We're gonna do purple and black. So I wanna kinda of show you what I do to do this. So what I've done is I've base painted. So in my other tutorials you've seen, sometimes I don't base paint, sometimes I do. I'm showing you this because for this specific type, when it's two different colors that are very contrasting, a spray paint base is very helpful. So what I did was I painted the black first because I want that to be the non-dominant color. Then I spray painted my red and I let it fan out. So it almost ombres itself already right here in the middle. That's gonna help you get a really nice, gentle ombre on your uh, container. This one is just a fun little cup that somebody gave me that they were given in a gift bag and they didn't want it. And I was like, oh, I'll use that for a tutorial. I'll do something fun on it and uh, make a pretty cup. So we're gonna do a red and black ombre together, mainly because they are very contrasting. So if you can learn it with the red and the black or really different colors like a white and a red or like two very contrasting colors, then a double ombre on gentle colors or blending colors will be super duper easy for you guys. So that's why I picked one of the hardest ones to do so that you can see the technique in action and put it to use in your workshop. All right, so what we're gonna use today is you need your tumbler. It doesn't have to be the shape or size. This is just what I had on hand. Um, you need the spray paint colors that you wanna work with. You don't have to do red and black. You can choose whatever colors you want. Um, I get funny comments about people who don't like the certain colors I use, and I laugh at those comments because common sense says you can use whatever colors you want. Uh, you don't have to use what I'm using. Um, you'll need your chemical mask because we are gonna work with epoxy. You need nitrile gloves, not just latex. They need to be nitrile if you're working with epoxy. A crystal clear spray paint, a measuring cup to mix your epoxy in, your tooth, uh, not toothpick, popsicle stick to mix it in, your A and B epoxy, um, and your three, you need two glitter colors. We're doing red and black, and then I have my cup of mixed together in the middle. So this is two thirds red and one third black. The reason I do that is if you do half and half, the black really dominates and we want it to look more even. So we do actually two thirds to one half for the darker, the darker color black has got to be the non-dominant color. And so it needs to be only in one third. Okay, so it's kind of pretty simple. You don't need too many um, tools to do this one. Um, if you don't want to work with epoxy, you haven't gotten brave enough yet, you can do the base with Mod Podge and you, then you can coat the entire thing with um, Mod Podge dishwasher safe, let it cure for 28 days and you then you can use that cup. However, you're not going to get that smooth, glossy finish that epoxy gives you, but it will be a usable cup and it is it makes it um, to where you can wash it. Even though it's dishwasher safe, these uh, stainless steel tumblers say don't dishwash. Um, so you would still have to hand wash it, but because it's dishwasher safe Mod Podge, you can in fact wash it like uh, hand wash it in the sink and it won't ruin that Mod Podge. But for the purposes of this, I like to make everything very permanent, very smooth and very aesthetically pleasing. So I am going to do epoxy. Um, so what we're going to do now is we are going to get set up and started and we're going to do the hang method. Um, if you have not learned how to prep a cup or to do the main hang method for epoxy application, Jump back on my YouTube channel. I have both videos. I have one on how to prep the cup and one on how to do hang method. And it will bring you up to speed with what we're about to do. So this cup has been prepped. I've taped it off. I've spray painted it and it's ready to go. And we are going to get set up and we're going to start. All right, guys, we are back. I have got my epoxy mixed equal parts A and B. Uh, check with your manufacturer if you're working with epoxy for the first time. Make sure it's not two to one. Some manufacturers make it two to one ratio. I've got my nitrile gloves on. These are not just latex. You need to wear nitrile. I've also, in fact, got my chemical mask on, as you can see. Uh, this is very important to make sure that you're not bringing in any of the harmful fumes that this puts off while it's mixing. You also want to use food safe, FDA compliant epoxy when you're working with these cups. All right. So, um, so double check your manufacturer and make sure that it's food safe and that it's a one to one ratio. So I'm going to set this up and do hang method. And we will be right back. All right, guys, we're back. And the cup has epoxy all over it. Um, I taped off the bottom and the top because I didn't want epoxy there. I'm going to leave the bottom and the top silver. Um, so what we're going to do is you got to decide on your tumbler 
which color you want to have the more, like the most dominant color. Whoops, I just put that on the wrong hand. So you have to decide which color you want the most dominant. Now, I want red the more dominant color. That's why I sprayed a little extra red on it. Um, I'm going to move my stand just out of the way. So the color you want to have a slightly bit, maybe a little bit more on than the other, just in case you get a little too much, especially if this is your first time, you want to do that color first. So I'm going to bring in, this is my epoxy mat. I don't need that. I'm going to bring in my, this is going to be parchment paper. I pre-folded it down the middle so that it will be easy to fold it and pour the glitter back into the cup. So it's already preset. That's a little handy tip for you guys. Makes it very easy to grab it with one hand and pour it because uh, it's already bent in the middle. So what you're going to do is you're going to take, I'm going to do red first because I want the red to be the most dominant. And I'm going to tap it on the cup. Sorry, I'll bring that in the closer into the middle of the... So I get a good little pile and then let it fall down the cup. Okay. Get a good little pile and then let it shimmy down the cup. Okay, and you're going to turn it, add more, and let it shimmy down the cup. So you can see it's really heavy at the top and it gets finer and finer towards the bottom. It's okay that some is going down there at the bottom. We're going to cover that with black anyway. It's su such a small amount that it won't really make a difference. Okay. Make sure you get all the spots all around the rim. I'm just going through and making sure I get all the little spots right around the top edge. I don't want to be missing any. Then I want to go, I want to take the red a little farther down. So now I'm going to go right on this rim on the edge. And add some more right on the edge and shimmy down. That way you get a little bit more coverage. Farther down into the red. Okay. Okay, tap it. This is just to get the excess glitter off. Okay, and I'm going to take my stand, bring it back in. Put it back on the stand while I clean up the red. And I'm going to clean up this red glitter and we will be right back. All right, now we are going to do the black. You're going to do the same concept, but you're going to start from the bottom and add the black and then shimmy it this way. Do the bottom, add a chunk, and shimmy it this way. Go to the bottom, add a blob, and shimmy it down. Go to the bottom, add your chunk, shimmy it down. Go to the bottom and shimmy it down. And right there, you almost have it completely perfect. It's so much easier than trying to, I don't know, I don't even know what other people do. I've never watched a video. I've just seen people's cups that were on braid, and uh, I just figured this out on my own. I just kind of was like, oh, this is how I would do it. Okay, so I'm going to stick this on my drying rack. I'm going to clean up this black, and I will show you the next step. Okay, so if you're doing this and you feel like the line in the middle is not good enough for you and you want it to be a little bit more dominant, um, more blurred, that's when you would take your mix, and you're just going to pour it in that middle section and just tap just gently. Add some, tap it on a little bit, shimmy it down. And this is why I said make sure you're very careful about your dominant color. You see how black is just taking over this cup even though it was predominantly red because black just dominates. All right, so see this down here? That won't stick. That's just, that's just temporary. So that will give you this beautiful ombre where it just blends right in. I'll take a paintbrush after probably about 20 minutes of letting this dry, and I will brush this part of the bottom off to get any of the residual red that's sticking there. 
and that will take care of that. But we just, what we're really going for is this gentle, soft line right here in the middle, and it looks absolutely gorgeous. Now, if you're like, okay, that's too much as I'm going, this one I'm like, oh, maybe I came up with a little too much red. That's all right, you can do a second coat. Uh, let this dry completely, just do a second hang method. You'll need a little bit more epoxy than normal uh, because you're covering over glitter. So usually you'd lose two mLs, but I would say you're gonna need about five. And you can redo it and then just do a second layer, um, just like you did that first layer. Uh, I'm gonna let this dry up so I can show you guys how we brush away this bottom glitter and uh, possibly do a second layer. So we'll see how I feel about it. Again, these are always evolutions, how I do these tutorials because I have a, a way that I think I'm gonna do it. But right now, that's such a beautiful blend uh, right down the middle that I may end up just staying with just one layer. So we'll see, I'm gonna let this cure up for about nine hours before we mess with it again. I do wanna jump back up and say, you guys, when you go to put this on your drying rack, make sure you remove your tape right after you put this on your drying rack because if you don't, uh, you are going to uh, epoxy that tape to your cups. You want to remove it once you get it on your drying rack while the epoxy is still wet. All right, we'll see you guys in a All bit. right, guys, so I'm jumping back on here really quick because I still have my chemical mask on because the epoxy under here is still wet. Uh, so I'm still wearing my mask. But as this was curing up, I realized I do want a little bit more red, but I don't want to do a whole second coat because the bottom is beautiful. I actually, when this is not in these bright lights, that red kind of disappears, like when you're in a regular light. It's really glowing right now in these studio lights, but it's it's very subtle, and I actually like the way it really is adding to the ombre when you see it in natural light. So, but I do want to add a little more red because I want to bring the red a little farther down the cup. So, sorry, my, my mask is, I tightened it up and I tightened it too much, sorry. So what I'm gonna do, instead of doing a whole layer of uh, uh, epoxy over the top, I just took a Craft Bond spray adhesive um, I will link this in the, um, all the supplies I use, guys, will be linked in the drop-down menu under this video. So if you were looking for any of the supplies I want, I'm going to have a pretty thorough list for you guys. So this will be in that drop-down menu. So what I did was I sprayed it, and I misted it, and I misted it, and I turned the can like this as I was spraying it. And that way it fans out and feathers out the spray adhesive down the cup. So that way I don't have just like a glob where the, the uh, glitter just stops sticking. All right, so... I, I can't spray that in my studio over here because I, I don't want spray adhesive everywhere on my uh, design space. So I'm just gonna, but I'm gonna do the same t method and it's gonna, it's gonna stick to that spray adhesive and do another coat of red. But that coat that we did in the middle with the half and half is really gonna help this super blend farther down the cup. So we're just going to, same technique, just put it on, shimmy it down. There we go. See, if you want it farther on, you kind of shimmy it um, at a less of an angle. If you want it to fall off faster, to see if I, I want it to go farther, and then I dip it. So if you want it, you can, the faster you move it, the shorter the, it will go up here. The, the, the slower you angle it and shimmy it, uh, the higher up, I mean, the lower down the glitter will fall. So see there, I want it to go down a little farther so I don't angle it as fast. All right, I'm really liking the way that's coming out. Just need a little more right here. Perfect. All right. So. Okay, and this is, see how easy that was to fold, guys? So I can do it with one hand. I just fold and turn and pour. And that is what amazing parchment paper does. Now that, all that glitter that's stuck there, if I just shake it, that will all come flying off because uh, parchment paper is very, very easy to work with. So now I'm gonna do another little, just a little bit of this in-between color. I'm not gonna press it this time. I'm just gonna pour and tap, pour and tap. And that's just gonna fill in any gaps. Gonna soften that line up a little bit. It's not gonna take away from the red. It's just gonna let the red kind of hang out. And fill in the gaps and just add a little sprinkle in the middle there. So that right there is a beautiful ombre. It's exactly what I was going for. I wanted it to be mostly red, 
kind of have a transition area and then into the black. So there is a little bit red down here, but like I said, I'll just brush that off because that's very topical. It won't actually stick once you once it's cured and I can brush that off with a paintbrush. All right, guys, so I'm going to get this curing and we will be back. I just wanted to show you how to do a second layer if you don't want to do the entire cup. You're just going to work on one co color. Normally, that would be a, what I consider a repair. So I do it live on my Facebook page. But this one was easy and quick, and I thought it would be a good tip for you guys to see. Hey, guys, we are back, and I have this big sucker hooked on to the turner already. Um, I am using my backup turner because this is the one I do with my awkward shaped cups. Um, I'm going to show you what is underneath here. So what I did was I just have an extra long arm, and it's inside the bottle. And then I put um, a little bit of uh, drawer liner, that thick rubbery drawer liner on the end and I wrap it around so that it kind of holds it steady inside the cup. So this bar is probably in there about here and it's probably touching up here. Then when I made this turner, I knew I was gonna be putting the awkward bottles on it. So I used an end cap for PVC, drilled a hole in it, slid it down and super glued it in place. And that way that gives my cup more support when it's this big awkward long thing so that rod is also inside and that's going to help keep it from warping down and bending down that's just going to kind of make it stable then i just use electrical tape to tape this bad boy on now you can do two things when you tape it off for this round you can tape it to the cup and then on top of it have a second layer of tape to tape it off that way when you finish, you can remove it. However, because I'm more skilled and I don't need to add that step for myself, I just do one big taping. I'm gonna actually let this cure down and I'm gonna do the hot epoxy removal method to slice through the epoxy if it attaches to this. But I'm gonna be pretty careful up here to try to not glob it all over my tape and just to make sure I get it right on this edge, but not all over this tape. So it should be fine. I'm gonna, because I don't wanna to have to remove any tape in the process. I'm just gonna do the correction and the fix at the end. So I've got my epoxy ready. I have my uh, silicone brush. I'm wearing my uh, nitrile gloves and I am also wearing my chemical mask already because I've been mixing the epoxy. So if you haven't mixed epoxy, you mix A and B parts, um, equal equal parts. You can, if you get these little measuring cups on the side, it says like 2.5 mils, 5 mils, 7.5 mils. So you can just fill it to the like 7.5 mils and then of A and then the 15 point with the B, and that way you know you have equal parts, all right? So I've already done that, I've got it mixed. Um, I have my torch ready for popping bubbles and we are gonna apply. I'm gonna start from the bottom and work my way up because I already have a dominant amount of red on the cup. I don't wanna necessarily uh, contaminate the bottom anymore. I'm gonna work from the bottom up, all right? I'm gonna put you guys on high speed and we will rock and roll. So we've got the entire cup covered. I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with my heat gun, uh, my torch, sorry. Uh, I will put the links uh, of all the tools that you guys in the drop down menu. So if you, do, you need a torch, I, f I found this one. It's a really, really good deal. It works wonderful. I've had this for a long time. It's super easy to refill the butane. So I will link this one specifically in the drop down menu for you guys. Uh, Cause I really, really like this torch. So I'm just gonna do this. Even though you can't see micro bubbles, they are there. And this is just gonna pop all the micro bubbles. You're gonna see some of the glitter move. If you're new and you've never ombre, you can put a coat of clear coat spray paint over the glitter, oops, sorry, I see a little spot, over the glitter before you do your epoxy. That's gonna help just keep it from moving and not spreading. But like I said, I know with the ombre, I actually don't mind it moving a little bit because that sometimes even helps the ombre look better. This is gonna be real pretty. So this is just gonna pop micro bubbles. Even though you can't see them, they are there. And uh, if you don't pop them, there's a really good chance that uh, you're gonna have texture on your finished product. So you wanna pop the bubbles. There's a whole bunch right there. You wanna pop the micro bubbles. Plus if there's a lot of micro bubbles, it will actually look cloudy. So if your cup has a weird cloudy look, that's micro bubbles. All right guys, so you wanna make sure you pop those. So we're just gonna let this bad boy turn for probably about six hours, then I'm gonna move it to the drying rack for six hours, and then we will be back. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the tape from the bottom. 
You want to pull the tape immediately after you apply your epoxy. That's how you get the cleanest line. Let me drop that right there. That's how you get a clean line on the bottom. You can see the little spots where the seams were. That's fine. I'm going to go and clean that up at the end with the X-Acto knife, and I will show you guys how to do that. And I'm also going to show you how to work on the top. So I'm kind of giving myself some issues here to show you on camera how to fix them. But we will go ahead and let this thing turn, and we'll, we, we will be back. All right, guys, there she is, all done. Um, I cleaned up the bottom with just uh, acetone and a cotton ball. I'm oh, sorry, coffee filter. This is both C's, cotton ball, coffee filter. With a coffee filter, I use that so there's no fibers. Um, but I'm not going to be epoxying this again, so it wouldn't have mattered. You could have used a cotton ball. I could have used a cotton ball. Um, and then I just took an X-Acto knife and looked for any little extra um, epoxy lying around. And it's done. So what I did, I don't know if I went through this on the video. I lose track because I'm doing so many tutorials at the same time for you guys. At the top, it had the um, I had the uh, uh, electrical tape to uh, make it so I didn't get into the threads. Uh, so I just took an X-Acto knife, heated up an X-Acto knife with my torch, and then just kind of slid my knife through the epoxy that had dried onto it um, because I had to leave the tape on it because the tape was what was holding it onto my turner. And as some of you in my Facebook group saw, I, I showed it to you guys in the process, and it was actually crooked on the turner. And you were questioning whether that was okay or not, and it's totally fine. As long as it's level, it doesn't matter if it's turning wonky as long as the rod is level. Because it will eventually even out the epoxy on its own because the rod is level. Um, so you can see here, there's no issues. I don't have any problems with this one. And it was turning all wobbly and weird, but it's fine. Um, I've learned I don't, I don't overthink my turners unless I actually start getting big globs or blobs or something weird happening to my turners, uh, to my cups. Um, so that's just a little bit of extra for you guys. Um, so this is how to ombre uh, two contrasting colors and get a gorgeous cup. So uh, I'm probably now going to throw some of my uh, Mama Mouse decals on this one and finish it off and make it look super cute with the polka dots and the bow tie and all that. Uh, but for now, I just really want to focus on the ombre with you guys and not make this a big fanfare event like I normally do with some of my big crazy cups. So I hope you guys learned something. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I post very frequently. You don't wanna miss out. Um, I constantly get people asking me for certain tutorials and I have to say, well, go back in my channel because you missed it, it's already there. Um, so just, if you don't wanna miss anything, subscribe to the channel and ring that bell. And that way you will get notifications every time I post something new. Uh, and try to keep up with me guys because I'm teaching you a lot of stuff really fast. Have a great afternoon guys and I will see you on the next tutorial. Bye guys.